Hey everyone, BJ Chorus, and this is Shout Out for a Cause, Home Edition. And today we're here with Jasmine's boyfriend. Jasmine, first of all, how are you coping with being in quarantine and dealing with this new normal, as we're calling it now? Um, it depends on the day, that's for sure. It depends on the hour. Right. <laughs> it's definitely causing me some anxiety and I'm definitely dealing with some depression, but that's okay because I have the tools and the resources to make myself feel better. I'm very privileged to live in a nice house with someone who loves me and not be worried about food. So I try to keep that in mind. And, you know, on one hand, I'm enjoying it. It's nice to like be able to read and take a nap and go on a walk, but I'm also definitely having a hard time. <laughs> so it's just one day at a time. And that's the whole thing. I think that's the key. You're so right about that one day at a time. And I mean, yeah. we would never expect it in any shape or form that this would be the turn of the way the industry would be. Yeah. It's, I guess it's one thing when you're auditioning for something and you don't get the job that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. That's a whole different type of scenario when it's kind of out of control from all ends. I mean, there's just yeah. no, no bearing to keep your feet on the ground the way we need to. Totally. It's, it's definitely unprecedented. And I feel for everyone, everyone. <laughs> and, but it's so cool because you're finding new ways to help voice for great causes. Yeah. And that's got to inspire you in so many ways too, to have these tools to be able to do so because being the silver lining of where we are today, we really are giving out some amazing shout out for causes for some unbelievable charities that yeah. needed help before COVID, but yeah. now more so we're helping create awareness. And tonight that's something that you're a big part of. Yes. Casa LA. So tell us a little bit how you got involved with this live Casa LA that Ashley and Topher Grace are pulling together tonight. Hi. Hi. I'm Grace's. I'm Topher. And I'm Ashley coming to you tonight from our dining room. The best wallpaper in our house. That's true. It is. <laughs> yes. We hope everyone out there is well and staying safe. We're so disappointed that we can't be together tonight at the Beverly Hilton, but are so glad that you've joined us virtually for Casa LA Live. Just by tuning in tonight, you are supporting the children and youth of LA County's foster care system. I attended one of Casa of LA's ga galas, similar to tonight's gala, but in person, um, a couple years ago, and I just fell in love with the people and I fell in love with the cause. I don't think a lot of people realize there are over 30,000 children in the foster care system in LA. Right. And most of those kids are being bounced from place to place. A lot of them might be homeless. They're in all kinds of situations. And like I just said, a lot of these kids bounce from place to place. Right. And what CASA does is it provides a court appointed special advocate to a child in the foster care system. And really what that means is they become a part of that child's life in figuring out their needs in school and figuring out their needs in maybe getting them a doctor's appointment and most importantly, advocating for them in court. My partner and I went to child court to visit CASA of LA at the beginning of this year and we got to sit in on a couple of court sessions. Um, and these are kids, like as young as like four years old, who have to stand in court and listen to a judge decide if they should stay with their mom or if they should go to an aunt's house or if they're going to go to yet another foster care house. And it's, these kids are forced to grow up really fast. And it's just a lot for a kid of any age to have to deal with. And the kids who are lucky enough to have a CASA, that means that there's an adult in the room advocating on their behalf, saying to the judge, well, I actually know this kid and I know the relationship that she has with her uncle is a really healthy one. Why don't we place her there rather than sending her to another, a new foster home? Information that the judge wouldn't otherwise know because a lawyer doesn't get to know a kid in that way and isn't act actively part of their life and seeing what's best for them. So the kids who have a CASA, 
have a much higher graduation rate, they do better in school, their mental health is higher, they are way more likely to end up in a permanent home, and only about a thousand of these kids have one. That's one thirtieth of the kids in foster care, which is amazing. It is amazing. Amazing, but not, but not nearly enough. No. And so tonight's event, um, what it does, similar, it's exactly the same as when it's in person, it's just over the computer tonight. Uh, CASA's gala every year raises at least a million dollars, which is 25% of their annual budget, which is a huge, important amount. This money helps train new CASAs and goes directly to giving them resources and to connecting them with children. Right now, there are over 200 children on the wait list. And all it really takes is people like us tuning in and having fun. You know, maybe you're just donating $5, maybe you're bidding on some of the silent auction items with that money will go towards benefiting CASA and helping kids in foster care, which by the way, is still happening in the midst of this pandemic. Homelessness is still happening. Kids are still in foster care. A lot of people don't have the luxury like we have to be safe in our homes, feeling secure and eating good food with people we love. There are so many kids who school is really like the safest place for them. And right now they aren't in school. Right. And they, they really need a CASA more than ever. So true. I'm thinking back. I think maybe one of the first times I met you was during CASA. I think so. I think it really was. Now, who was being honored? Was, was Mary Beth Evans being honored the first CASA LA that you went to? I can't, I can't remember if it was her or if it was the Fosters. It may have been both. I got six Emmys now, but this has got to be like truly the seventh Emmy for you. This is an amazing organization because it's um, a, a, a court appointed advocate for a foster youth and they can be moving around from you know group home to group home with no one paying direct attention to them and making sure that they get the best things and that's what a CASA is and there's not enough there's not enough in LA. What does that honor mean to you guys because you know you have such a foundation with the show that just is so directed to what CASA is about here in Los Angeles. Our show becomes more and more relevant every day with what's going on in the world and the foster system is something that needs help and needs attention and we're just thrilled to be doing it. It's CASA to the fosters talking all about the foster system. This got to be pretty surreal tonight. It is and it, you know it's kind of interesting how it all comes full circle. You know I mean we're being honored here tonight. CASA does such incredible work with the foster care system and with foster kids and everything that they do is uh, remarkable and so we're so thankful to not only be here tonight but especially be honored for the work that we do on the fosters and it all comes full circle and that's like my favorite part about it is that we all relate to it in some particular way. Are, so it's, it's an amazing honor to be here. It's the fifth, fifth year that this has been a thing. So to be here and to be with my cast and crew and, and the producers, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Obviously because of the show, The Fosters, mm -hmm. The Fosters was truly and still is such an integral part of Casa LA. And naturally so because this show built around the foster community, I mean, what a great show to shed the light yeah. on truly what it's to be like and how to become a part of the foster community. For sure. That was that show was a big, big deal. What are some of your memories from the Fosters? I I actually was on the Fosters. It was my very first acting job in LA, funny right. enough. Um, I just had a two-line, very small part where I said, like, you know him <laughs> or something mm -hmm. like that. But that was pretty early on in their filming, and that was the first set I was ever on in L.A., and they were very nice to me, very welcoming. Uh, and then one of my good friends, Tom Williamson, he ended up doing a recurring role. He played AJ for quite a long time, and so I went on set with him once and spent time with everybody it's a really good group of people and a really important show. And um, yeah, I just think the representation across every spectrum. Right. They really did a good job with that. Right. And of course, their spinoff, I guess, is still on free form, which mm -hmm. is kind of nice to keep on nurturing the awareness. And that's the key. I mean, yes, it's great to be celebrity and to be able to advocate but the volunteers are so crucial. And tonight's one of those great 
parts about the gala is hopefully it's a semi not only a fundraiser but to also recruit new people just like when you came on board several years back to help communicate what we need to do to help keeping these 30,000 plus in Los Angeles safe in the foster community. Yeah, the, the volunteers are the most important part because CASAs, they are volunteers, they're not getting paid. And I think the amount of hours required per week to be a CASA is low, but I believe most end up putting in much more time than that because they come to really care about the, the kids that they're working with and just the organization in general. And for myself, I thought becoming an advocate, uh, that's funny, an advocate for CASA, not a not an actual CASA, but an advocate right. for CASA, was one of the best ways that I could contribute because I don't actually have, well, I do now, but in general, I don't have the time to commit that much, right. that many hours a week to a kid. Um, but I wanted to become involved in any way that I could, hopefully in helping bring more CASAs in, bring more awareness, even if it's $5 here, $1 here, that money will go a long way. Right, and that's just it. I love that you're saying $5 goes here, and it does go a long way, and that's the irony because, you know, everyone is dealing with the financial crunch. Yeah, totally. Thousands of $5 everywhere that's pulling together to give to Casa LA. Yeah. And by the way, we should remind everyone they can learn more about Casa LA at casala.org. And I'm sure the gala is going to be um, not only streaming tonight, obviously, but they will have the actual gala on the website and mm -hmm. on their Facebook so that people that might miss what's happening tonight with the gala, that they'll be able to see it later. But yeah, a little more to volunteer and do everything at CasaLA.org. So funny because I, I mentioned Mary Beth Evans, and Mary Beth Evans was not only honored a few years back, but Every year she donates a meet and greet and it just brings like almost $10,000 every time Mary Beth puts that up. And that's the power of the celebrity in giving back to the community. Yes, so totally. That's what's exciting. <laughs> so what should we expect from you tonight? Tonight I'll be popping in to say a little bit about CASA to tell a longer version of the story I just told about visiting them in person. And my partner will be making that appearance with me as well. And then there will be all kinds of great appearances. Crystal Joy Brown from Hamilton will be doing a performance. Look at where you are. Look at where you started. The fact that you're alive is a miracle. Just stay alive, that would be enough. And if this child shares a fraction of your smile, a fragment of your mind look out a world that would be enough okay golden will be rapping take a look at my lifestyle right now a lot for me to lose ain't always in the right like right now a lot for me to prove rachel bilson andy grammer there's going to be all kinds of wonderful appearances you don't want to miss it and you can tune in just like you said to casala.org but also the facebook page is facebook.com slash casa spelled c-a-s-a -A of la casa of la and it'll be streaming on youtube so you have three platforms i don't think there's really an excuse right there's no excuse and if they do miss it because oftentimes even as we're dealing with COVID 19 People are doing other fundraising, believe it or not, as we're talking. And so they're going to miss it. But then we've got so many people that are so giving in the community. At least they can learn more. And yeah. everybody's going to be promoting it through their socials and giving great shout out for a cause for Casa LA. And once again, reminder, CasaLA.org. So it's going to be exciting. It's so great to see you so and it's to, see great you. to see that you're giving back. And, you know, it's interesting you mentioned before about depression and it is so important that people take heed that there are others like yourself that are going through these moments, but there's help, there's support from a family member, a loved one. And 
we're all going to get through this. We're all in it together. And I know that the phrase sounds cliche, but we really but are going to get through this together, Jasmine. Yeah, it's true. And, and then, at one point, we'll be back on physical red carpets and not on the virtual red carpet. <laughs> and we'll be back into production the way that we hope it to be. Yeah. Now, interestingly, you are in post-production of a couple projects right yeah. now. So let's talk about what's going on with you Great. and about these amazing projects that you're a part of. Awesome. Uh, yeah, at the end of last year, I did a couple things. I was lucky enough to be a part of a film called Conductor. Start simple. All right, the basic rhythm has four parts. This is not giving anything away. I play a serial killer, mm -hmm. and that is very exciting. We don't get to see female serial killers that often, especially a female serial killer of color who's queer. So many great things going on. Right. So that's exciting. That is in post-production. I don't know when that will come out. Um, that was directed by Alex Neuer. And yeah, that was super, super fun. We shot in LA. And then I'm waiting to see if the pilot that I did gets picked up, a pilot for Showtime called Yellow Jackets, starring some amazing actresses, including Christina Ricci and Melanie Linsky and one of my friends, Amy Okuda, just a bunch of awesome, awesome actresses that we should find out about in the next month or two. And what else am I doing? I'm doing a little bit of music writing, which has been really good for my soul. Um, yeah. Well, that's great. And you know, they do say music is healing. And I think that's the one thing that we've seen throughout the entire pandemic is music is becoming a stronger thread of all yeah. of our lives. And that's another one of those silver linings that we've got to relish. And mm -hmm. gosh, I look forward to hearing some more music then that you'll be uh, writing. That'll be... Yeah. Someday. <laughs> yeah, Yellow Jacket, can you share a little bit about your character for the pilot? Yeah, yeah. So my character, I, so it's really cool because the show flashes back and forth in time. Um, it follows a group of girls on a high school soccer team, and that's one of my characters. And they're on their way to one of their playoff games and their plane crashes and they are having to survive in the wilderness for a long time. And then it flashes forward to those girls, the ones who survived, who they end up becoming as adult women. And I play the younger version of a character named Thaisa, who, of course, my dog is barking. Oh, we love our dogs. Mine was earlier. I don't know if you heard her or not. I didn't. Mine was barking earlier. You can definitely hear mine, but I think my partner will get her. Um, oh my goodness. That's Linda. okay. Don't worry. We all love hearing our animals. She's feeling passionate. So, yes. So, my character, Thaisa, she's the star soccer player. And she's very focused and very, um, she's just, she's very passionate about soccer. Very focused, kind of more inward and quiet compared to a lot of the other girls she takes things in and sees the world mm, from a very specific perspective i'll just say and um, the older version of my character is played by tawny cypress and she's lovely and wonderful and it was really fun because they have to make us look alike so they kind of changed our eye colors and changed our hair a little bit. I look totally different. I can't wait for everyone to see how I look in this role. Uh, this is exciting. And I presume the name of the team is the Yellow Jackets? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yellow, one of your colors, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So we hope to see this on Showtime. Have you speculated yeah. to think how you will be going back to production? with the series at this point, from the things that you already know that you have filmed, the setup of 
how the show's going to run? Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. I've read some articles talking about how they're looking to pick up things that either like have no love scenes and no, or no fight scenes. So there's no contact, but I've also read things saying that basically the actors while filming will just be very sheltered, that we'll have our temperatures taken every day and we'll be put in a hotel secluded somewhere. So we can't come in contact with anyone who might be sick. So we can continue filming those scenes. So I really don't know. Uh, assuming that there's more soccer scenes, soccer is a contact sport. Yeah. So it would be really hard to shoot those scenes without any touching, but I know we could make it work. Also, you know, tricks of the camera. Yeah, and digital today. Yeah. There's so many different ways. Speaking of contact, did you see video? Oh channel? yeah, the fight one. The fight one. I'm oh, bored. I just want to play with my friends. Wait a minute. <laughs> I can't play with my friends. What the heck, Zozo? It's so badass. I know. So there's there's options to make this work. Yeah, I, I feel that's like true. we're all creative enough, Jasmine, that we can find a way to make the things work in the toughest times. When I agree. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's one of the beautiful things about this pandemic is it's shown us how important art is. Right. How important creativity is and Hopefully everyone remembers when we return back to normal life that in the midst of this quarantine, everyone turned to TV and movies and music. In other words, you turned to artists, fund right, the art. Right, and that's gonna be the irony. People are re-falling in love with the yeah. word art, no matter what form it is, whether it be television, like you mentioned, movies, theater, uh, yeah. music, and then arts and craft and art. Yeah. And I mean, Everybody's exploring new hobbies and things that they normally wouldn't be doing and the art of spending time with your family and your pets. Yeah, I mean, and baking. Baking. So have you Exercise. been baking? Oh yeah, I'm I'm that person. Except okay. I'm posting everything on Instagram for everyone to see. Yeah, I've become a baker. I've made I've made four pies, a bunch of cookies, cinnamon rolls, um, not bread yet. I want to try bread, but that sounds like it's going to be hard, but I'm... But the problem is, Jasmine, I hear you can't get yeast. And I personally have looked for yeast and I can't find yeast and you can't bake the bread without the yeast. So One of my friends and I went in on a two pound bag together. Oh, good for you. So I like know. five of us are like sharing this two pound bag. So I love it. I, we got, I got lucky that I you have... Know, what's the funnest thing that you've done now during this pandemic and being quarantined at home you feel yeah i have a group of friends that i read a play with on zoom every friday okay and so where can so we learn more much fun yeah it's me and my partner and our friends jordan gavaris and devin gray and christian brune and muna and our friend hanika and i'm definitely forgetting elise levesque Kristen Gatowski. I'm definitely forgetting someone, but we just, a bunch of like great actors who are also my friends. We just take turns picking a play and casting it or a screenplay or movie, but so far we've just done plays. And we get on Zoom and we read it. And yeah. it has been so much fun and so good for my soul and a good way to read new plays. I'd never read the play Cloud Nine and I'd never read the play Dance Nation. Uh, I'm getting exposed to new plays and new playwrights and I'm getting to like play around and act. I've been like, oh my gosh, have I for what if I forgot how to act? What if I can't act anymore? <laughs> it's silly, but it's helping me stay, stay malleable and stay practiced.
Well, that's the best part too, I think, that you know, we always have to keep working on our tool. And through this time period, it sounds like you have been working on your tool, and that's great. Now, are the Zoom productions online, or can people see them, or is this just between you and your group of fellow thespians? So far, it's just been between us, but I've thought about that. I've thought maybe we should record uh, one of the readings or two and post them for people to enjoy because it is a group of great actors. Right, right. <laughs> so it could be fun for someone, for some people to enjoy watching us stumble our way through a play. Uh, so I'm gonna, you know, now that you've asked that, I think I really should suggest it to the group. I love that. I definitely think you should because I think that's the interesting part about this new normal that if we see, and also, if we see things like this, that it will help inspire other people and mm -hmm. other youth. And we'll see some greater talents from people taking lessons from some of the people that they admire, whether it be on TV or musically or on oh, the big screen, you, you, you're inspiring the youth of tomorrow. I know that kind of sounds cliche, it's true. but it's true. And, yeah. it's, and it's also like, you know, even with your CASA, the kids at CASA, you know, they want to strive to be something that if they see someone that they know and recognize like yourself, you know, they may say, well, Jasmine can do it. I can do it. I'm not letting anything hold me back. I want to be like Jasmine and I want to do this because right now I can get a few of my friends and I can do the same thing. So I'm challenging you, Jasmine. I love it. I take it on. Thank you. It's a great challenge. So Jasmine, let's tell everyone where they can find you on social media, on Instagram yes. and Twitter. Yeah, on Instagram and Twitter, you can find me at Jasmine, spelled J-A-S-M-I-N, Savoy, spelled S-A-V-O-Y, at Jasmine Savoy. Yeah. <laughs> Jasmine, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Great. I can't wait till we can talk in person someday, I know, I but I'll know. take this. I know. And we need, do need to remind everyone to learn more about Casa LA. Yes. You can donate, you can volunteer, whatever way you want to, go to casala.org and you can follow everyone on social media there. And there's going to be some great new things that uh, we're going to be seeing, I can guarantee, Jasmine, in the social media circles with virtual galas like you're a part of today so that's pretty yeah. exciting yeah and i think that we're going to see a whole new world in the respect of of keeping strong and resistant and helping serve the foster community here in los angeles you can learn more by going to casala.org and jasmine once again let's tell them where they can follow you in social media and see all your upcoming projects Yes, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Jasmine Savoy. I will be posting about my projects when they come out. In the meantime, I post a lot of pictures of my cat and my dog. <laughs> we love it. I mean, that's, I think that's the greatest part where we're all enjoying our animals. How do you think things will change for you when we go back to work and you got to give up some of these things that are now guilty pleasures. Do you think you'll yeah. try and build this back into your routine and keep yeah. it? Yeah, you know, I I feel like this has reminded me what, what and who are important in my life. Right. I've been using the app Marco Polo a lot to communicate with my best friends and my family back home. And it's, I'm start, I've started to see a pattern of who are the people I wanna check in with every day. And so for one, it'll realign how I spend my time in regards to the people I spend my time with and making a priority out of the people who I should make a priority out of. But also, I just, I am someone who loves to work and I love to fill my schedule and I love to go, 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 go. But I'm reminded that pleasure is really important and taking the time to read or go on a walk or nap or take a bath really is valuable, especially for mental health. And so I think when we go back to normal, I want to make sure I don't overcommit myself, which is going to be hard for me, but I think I can do it. Maybe if I say I can schedule a max amount of things a week or something like that, or maybe I have to actually schedule downtime. That might be a good way to go about that. But I think that's, I, I'm hopeful that that is a key takeaway that I will have from this experience.
I'm loving it, Jasmine. We're there with you. Trust me on that one. I mean, Good. it's kind of funny because, I mean, we're doing at Shout Out for a Cause at Home Edition. And it kind of is nice not to have to drive an hour into L.A. Yeah. An hour back. And it's those, again, those things that we don't think so about. True. We always know we have to deal with and fighting the traffic, this, that, and the other. That it kind of gives somewhat of a calmness and and yeah. keep the serene to some direction. It's true. And like right before this, I was on a walk with my dog knowing I just needed five minutes to get myself ready. Whereas if we were in person, it would have been right. hair and makeup and wardrobe, which is great, but it just would have been a five hour thing as right. opposed to getting to hang out with you in my house while you're in your house and just spend part of the afternoon together. I love it. I love it. I love your Casa shirt. We need to remind everyone, learn more about Casa Los Angeles <laughs> at casala.org. Don't forget, you can donate, you can volunteer, and if you just want to spread the awareness of Casa, yeah. you can do so at casala.org. This is BJ Chorus. You can follow me at Talk Blog Guy and at hashtag shout out for a cause. Jasmine, we can follow you at? On Instagram and Twitter at Jasmine, J-A-S-M-I-N, Savoy, S-A-V-O-Y, Jasmine Savoy. Well, we appreciate it, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Shout Out for a Cause at Home Edition with Jasmine. And remember, learn more about Casa LA at casala.org. <laughs> awesome talking with you. I can't so wait much. to see you. I may have to reach out to you. We may have to have a cooking bake-off with the Zoom call for us. Do it. I would love that. That would be so fun. Well, take care. Once again, everyone, remain safe and healthy at home. And yeah. don't forget that there's over 30,000 fosters throughout the Los Angeles community. And you can learn more. Give your shout out for a cause. Please go to casala.org. Once again, this is BJ Chorus, and I'm with Jasmine Savoy Brown. And this is Shout Out for a Cause at Home Edition. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Shout Out for a Cause at Home Edition. And thanks to our guest, Jasmine Savoy Brown. You can learn more about everything that Jasmine's doing by going to her social media at Jasmine Savoy. And please give your shout out for a cause for Casa LA, whether you want to donate, volunteer, or just become a part of the Casa. You can learn more at Casa LA.org. You can also tune in to Celebrity Page Nightly. Learn more at CelebrityPage.com. Again, thanks for joining us on this edition of Shout Out for a Cause at Home Edition. Until next time, this is BJ Chorus reminding you, please stay safe and at home. And if you like the video, hit the like button and do subscribe. Until next time, this is BJ Chorus, and once again, thanks for tuning in to Shout Out for a Cause at Home Edition.